Some things I see, I see, I see. We just don't believe in reality, reality, reality. Oh, uh, they fed us some harsh lessons about our adolescence. How they nasty chemistry sessions to rise from recession. They refuse to fail, seen the scale with bigger eyes. Ya 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 bacha kuruma na mfano bacha tsika mangaja ni ulungani kwa lalo aka umfana ga chocolate i am too sweet you cannot swallow me you can only kiss me welcome to the global sunday show it's another sunday it's another beautiful day ah uh, bafe to um yeah let me just uh, hint you a little bit with any what we have today um before i waste any time because i know most of you know already what's going on um l- let me say this if you are younger than 18 years old please just go to your bedroom and fall asleep you know if you have if you don't have any ideas of how you can fall asleep you can count ships you know <laughs> you can count ships or you can watch our previous shows until you fall asleep because today it's going to get crazy today it's going to get serious today you know if you are lost and you are in the hip hop industry you don't have a direction today you will find a direction today you will find out what real rap is and what real hip hop is oh my god welcome to the show welcome to the show but uh without wasting any time let me just um uh, reveal my beautiful um lovely hosts uh yes from um Germany we have uh, people Tafel uh from uh, South Africa we have a uh, Miss Classic the queen of a global sunday and from America Arizona we have Mr Laden the professor of ballet ah yeah 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 you welcome to the show guys and just take over just forget about me take over the show <laughs> welcome everybody um i'm mr ludden and welcome to global sunday today is may 30th and we have a wonderful wonderful guest today um but also we are dealing with some major changes in the hip hop industry um and so i would like to turn over to miss classic now normally at the beginning of the show we talk about the week we had and so miss classic tell us about your week but tell us what you're able to to tell us okay you've had a very difficult week i know we love you and we stand by you in this time welcome to everyone uh thank you mr laden uh i welcome all my viewers at home and our uh, beautiful handsome uh hosts and to our uh, producer lungan gwala 
I greet you all. I'm in South Africa in Devon and uh, had a very, very, very good week despite the other two, the, the, the two weeks ago that I was not with you. Uh, but I'm back now. Life has to go on and uh, I, I can share a lot of good memories with my late son, O2. Uh, and uh, I'm so grateful that he did share beautiful memories with uh, our handsome uh, guest that we have today from New York, William Bostick. And uh, my week was okay. Um, so what kept me going? It's my music and all the things that I, I, I get to do so that I don't get depressed. I keep busy all the time, as you know. So I received my copy of the album I did with Mam Klinam Sope. The name of the album is uh, African Mother Christmas. Uh, we did it with Mam Klinam. There's an album. So if anyone wants it, you can just inbox Lungani or myself. Then you can get a copy of yourself and hear beautiful poetry with jazz music that is done by Umam Klinam Klope and featuring Umis Classic, which is me, the Queen of Global Sundays, in two songs. Rather than that, I celebrated that because they were having a festival at the KCAP Wamashu and I had to meet Umam Stella Kumalo, uh, the top, 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 top people uh, from Department of Art and Culture. And uh, they were embracing the culture. And I had the event that took place in Wamashu Station of Hip Hop, the Hood Up with Dude. And it was uh, sponsored by Inanda at 8.4 FM. So that's where I spent my evening yesterday and it was a lovely evening. The performers were lovely and the guys were rapping nice words, music, poetry in rap music. And then I finished it up with my lovely interview with Smongile Mgoma, uh, our singer, our opera soprano singer, our music coach, and I had a very nice call after the interview of sharing a lot of things about how to deal with depression and her offering how to work together with me. So that's the end of my week. It's still going to be awesome as I'm here at the Global Sundays. So stay tuned. Uh, now I'm going to just throw it back to people, uh, the uh, people tougher. Over to you. Miss Classic. People, are you there? Great to have you back. Welcome back. And it's also good to see you, Mr. Laden. And like we just heard already about hip hop, I had the chance to get into material of listening to music of O2 and the group. And I got in touch with one of the musicians and it's beautiful to feel that there is something out there which is like a family however it's not the biological family so when there are people that we work with and also that we share our passion with there is something very strong about this and it gave me a chance to remember it and also to look at some of the music i've been listening more when i was a little bit younger you know um, I come from Stuttgart and Stuttgart is the city of a, ma a main city of German hip-hop actually so there's a Freundeskreis and I remember how I saw a film at 19 um, by Don Filippi was the music and it was a tragic film um, called Otomo about a guy who gets controlled in the tram and they say he doesn't have a ticket and then he gets upset and he runs away and in the end he ends up killing four policemen or five and it really happened in Stuttgart and it has the beats of Don Felipe under it and it is it couldn't be better it has a quality that I have never heard before and although I'm not a big hip hop experience guy there's some stuff i've listened to and it speaks about things and i 
I'm a bit old school, so I listened to Jill Scott Heron, and I, I was I was very inspired um, this week. And also, um, projects are progressing. I'm I'm working on a project, and it things became more clear. So I will be directing a, a podcast with artists from the performing arts uh, from the 40s and 50s. So there's a lot of things going on. That's wonderful, you know, and, and what everybody is really speaking toward is the fact that in the arts, we are a family. Um, we are only separated geographically and we artists move around so much that even that becomes irrelevant. And so let's take a look at the entertainment news, all of our fellow family members around the world. Um, Mugani, if you'd take us into the entertainment news report, please. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Laden. Thank you so much, uh, people. Uh, Miss Classic, uh, my lovely host. Um, yeah, what I have for you today, uh, viewers at home, um, I have um, two things only that I will share with you. Um, uh, the first thing is that uh, I will announce the winner. If you remember, we have been running a competition um, that is happening in Gauteng. Um, it's called Faces of Z Models. And um, this week there was, a, there was um, a challenge where they had to post their photos and whoever get the most likes will win a prize from the sponsors that sponsored the show. So this is really awesome. So today I'll be announcing the winner of this challenge. And then also um, three things actually. And also I'll be telling people about the event that is coming, um, the Global Sunday event, the first annual celebration and youth month uh, that is coming um, in a few weeks time, which is really, really awesome. So I will share a private poster this poster I will share with you, you are fortunate that you are watching the Global Sunday today because this poster is not out yet. So you are seeing some private stuff because you're part of the family. Um, yeah, and yeah, and then I'll be playing a music video by um, um, Swift. If you remember Swift Beagle, we had him on the show previously. He was a special guest. So um, he released a new music video um, a few weeks ago called 10 out of 10. So I'll be playing that video so let us let us start start with um um the event on the 12th of june uh the celebration of uh, the global sunday fest annual i am so excited i'm sure everybody's so excited right now <laughs> and i've been getting a lot of messages if you're watching right now and you're one of the people who've been sending me messages asking me about the venue about what's going on information is going to come out soon this is a very important um event for for all of us you know the the, the followers uh, of global sunday the guests of global sunday and the host of global sunday so it's 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 really going to be amazing let me see if i can just stretch that a little bit so it can be right in front of my face and everybody can see it we're talking about um um you know um um, um performers like i was telokowane um tandy sony uh zizi kingston uh shinely greens um uh, oh the schoolmates oh dj katanov uh katafond uh oh oh zulu pavarotti um damon uh we're talking about it, it but there's a lot of them it's gonna be crazy it's gonna be packed you cannot miss this one if you want to support by getting a, by purchasing a ticket please kindly do so um do get in contact or send us an email or send us um, an inbox on our Facebook page. You definitely going to be part of this. Who knows? Maybe you know uh, the location is going to be private. You know, you know, you know. So if you contact us now and get your ticket, trust me, your ticket is going to do a huge difference in different communities in South Africa. Since you know we are facing hard times now. <clears throat> Drum roll, drum roll, for the moments that everybody has been waiting for. The winner of the Z models, like my pick challenge, is model number 020. 
yeah so if you are watching congratulations to you number zero two zero uh, you just won yourself a prize uh the competition has not ended yet it still continues so uh do tune into the global sunday so you can get informed don't stay behind it's really awesome it's really crazy uh we have a huge 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 support for um e youth and since we are getting into youth month we're gonna be much 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 uh, more focusing on the youth so yeah without wasting any time uh, yeah, let me play you this uh, uh, music video from um, Uswif. Swift saying 10 out of 10. This is my guy. I always tease him and say, hey, man, you stole my song. Because there's this song that um, he uh, he made, he recently made, um, and I love it. I mean, it's so amazing. It's so chilled. It's, 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 an, it's a nice track. And I was like, hey, man, I wrote this track. I wrote this track. And he was like, hey, man, shut up. Because people are going to believe you. They believe everything that you said. I was like, hmm, everybody believe everything that I say? Huh, let me see. Anyways, I'm not going to share what I'm thinking of right now. But yeah, let's uh, check out this music video. And then we continue with our beautiful host, Miss Klasiki, uh, Mr. Ken Laden. People Tafel, and then we reveal our guest, William Bostick. Enjoy the show. I will be with you, and I will see you later. Lungani kwa la bete. Kuruma na mufano bache zikamba kanga jani lungani kwa la lo. AKA Chocolate Kid Leo. I am signing out. Tena dote. Turn up, turn up, turn up. I win. Turn up, turn up, turn up. Turn up, turn up, turn up. Eleven times out of ten, I win. Cherry, I'll be perfect ten. I win. Full of my mates, I'm a ten. I win. So much the lunk I ten. I win 11 times out of 10 I win Cherry I'm in perfect 10 I win Full of my mates and I 10 I win Baba the lunk I ten. I win my first single sound like an album My album sound like a career Let this shit that I'm dropping right now Could end up with Jita's career They told me to stop playing fair Cause none of this Jita's play fair And none of the fucks against it close to you Swift you had got and you right over there like Tip it toe and at the top Got this damn nose again toes like it's belly time Oh my god, oh my god Got this neck nose again feelings like it's Valentine's Cause they sisters and they girlfriend sisters Got my music on blast like all the times And they mothers and they mothers friends Got my music on blast, it's over time Young kid doing major Remember when you said I wouldn't Now I'm actually doing 10, 10 times better than I ever thought 11 times out of 10 I win Cherry I'm in perfect 10 I win I'm a mate and a ten. I win. So much the lunk I ten. I win. Eleven times out of ten. I win. Cherry I'm in perfect ten. I win. For now my mate and a ten. I win. Baba the lunk I ten. I win. I f all that fairly just keep it real. This tug and pony fake, they never real. Your favorite rapper stole four bars from my tape, yeah, yeah, let's keep it real. He didn't think I'd show up to the scene and show the people who the really real is be. But now I'm rapping shoulders with the so and souls, they ain't know who the real is be. So I ain't mad at you, man. Gagbono, yes, I'm in an again. Miss Dalla, my spell, I'm on your end. This comeback and Holland's a guy, I'm a Holland. See, I'm dirt, CD rapping, no chingens, no, we don't run out of style. Creating style is my lifestyle, pushing vibe. Now, not my chance now, got a pipeline full of future plans, future looking bright I see rollers coming, I see mentions coming, I see deals coming, I see millions coming in the bag Eleven times out of ten, I win Cherry, I'm in perfect ten, I win Full of my mates and I ten, I win So much the lunk I ten, I win Eleven times out of ten, I win Cherry, I'm in perfect ten I win For now my mate and I ten I win Baba and the long I ten I win
Greenberg. This is your one and only queen of Global Sundays. I welcome all of you, my lovely good people, to the Global Sundays, especially the one that is sending a lovely message right now. That is the one and only the sister to our late Sheila Kumalo, Upa Brakumalo. Uh, you welcome at the uh, Global Sundays. Uh, this is your home. You can always feel love, the love uh, and your sister spirit is always going to remain with us here in South Africa and internationally. Uh, and I also want to um, welcome everyone who is tuning in right now. Please share uh, in your uh, page, Facebook page. And I welcome all the hosts, including our handsome uh, hip hop rapper, the DJ and the producer. Uh, Mr. William Postick, uh, all the way from New York, in the house. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? What's going on? We are so yeah, glad yeah, to yeah, have yeah. you here. <laughs> appreciate you for having me. I really do appreciate you for having me on Global Sunday. So you are Thank really you. making a big splash on the scene now. Tell our viewers about yourself about your music and um, your your journey. It's a very impressive journey. Name's William Bostic, Brooklyn, New York, um, New York representative. Um, I tried to, you know, I, well, I consider myself one of the, the, I guess, pioneers and front runners of the Grammy hip hop movement. I, I make real Grammy straight hip hop. Um, I paint pictures you know, with words, I, I give you the realities of the streets of how we grew up and some of the things that are still presently going on in the street. You know, uh, um, I'm not here to give anyone a fantasy, some pretend, you know, story. Everything in my music is factual. Um, it comes from what we see and what we grow up seeing every day and what goes on around us every day. It's really hard hitting, you know, um, one of the things I really like, and one of your songs, which you'll be sharing later in this broadcast, is called Mathematics. You know, and you do that, you paint a picture. You show and tell what's actually happening and what you're faced with, what youth is faced with in yeah. urban cities these days. And then instead of making a comment about it, you say, you do the mathematics. In yeah. other words, you know, this world has just got to step up and show up and understand that, yeah. you know, what you're made of is what you're fed and what this world is feeding our young generation. We got to do something about it because it's not right. Yeah, uh, it definitely isn't. Definitely isn't. More, more, more people need to step up and realize that um, the violence in the inner city communities is also, you know, attributed to, you know, lack of, uh, of after school programs for these kids, lack of just anything for them to do. There's no more sports programs for them. There's no more music programs in the schools for them. So, you know, um, the violence that we deal with every day is due to a lot of these young kids growing up, really not having any father figures or nothing to do. It, it, it's, you know, it comes from boredom, honestly. Um, I know the kid, the young kids that I speak to all the time, they got nothing to do, you know, they, it, and the majority of them are not even going to school. So they get an the education in the street. They get an the education on how to sell drugs, how to shoot guns and, you know, so, these are the, like I said, these are the realities we face with in in the, in the, in the, you know, in the ghetto, in the inner cities. Um, and this is, these are the visuals that I'm giving you. I'm giving you the realities, the realness of what's going on um, in my city, you know, in Brooklyn, you know, what's really going on. That's, that's what I'm, I'm giving you. Well, you know, one of my fellow panelists, oh, Nico Tafel, um, has done a lot of research. He always does. Um, always makes me feel a little bit undereducated. But um, Pifo, why don't you welcome our guest and share a little bit of what you've looked into? Hello, William, and it's great to have you on the panel today as a, our special guest for the one year anniversary of the Global Sunday. Thank you for having me. What you're speaking of is something that our producer also has a, a, in, in, the, in the core of, of his intention is to speak to the people and to tell them things and make them 
raise attention to what is really important. And I think everybody on this panel is doing that. And, yeah. you know, Mr. Laden, you've been going for educating knowledge and no matter how the fashion of doing it became, you were teaching the knowledge of how to do things and doing it and, and, and doing the work. Mm -hmm. So, um, William, looking at your work, you, you speak of spirituality, you, yeah. you shoot the footage in the streets, yeah. you have put out an impressive amount of films in the last year. So we can actually see the streets of your neighborhood and yeah. you went outside and you did something and someone made me aware of that when I was down, what helped me to survive was the arts. And yeah. I wasn't aware of it myself. It, it is some intuitively I, I did it and it is really um, something that is beyond any financial attribution if yeah. it's possible to create. So mm -hmm. it's a big pleasure um, to have you here. And, and there's so many questions I have <laughs> that I will need to pass on, you know? Ask away. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Miss Classic, would you please welcome our guest? Um, and, you know, um, you have a very special connection with him because you're both exactly in the same part of the arts industry, with that is the music, okay? Mm -hmm. Welcome, uh, Mr. William Bostic. Um, it's a pleasure for us to have you here. And uh, I would love to appreciate the fact that you even shared your music, your brain, your universal language with, uh, with O2. Yeah. So I send a shout out to you. Hmm? May God rest, you know, may, may he rest in peace. Man. He was a good brother. He was, you know, a genuine soul. Man. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I, I heard you're a part of a great team here in South Africa of the Saints PMF, um, yes. Lindani and Opa and uh, Tokozo and Mlu, uh, including Umelu, who was known as uh, o2 in the music industry uh, yeah so may may his soul rest in peace i just want to welcome you warmly in this house and i want you to feel at home uh, anytime you need to talk you need you're doing projects uh, you must know that you have a sister in south africa you have saints pmf you. You. you got we got you you got we got you and we have you have lungani the other side and mr laden and people and david uh, so I want to give you a warm welcome in the house of the Global Sundays. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. Okay, we're going to hear more about uh, you when we come back uh, from the news. Uh, let's just uh, throw it back to uh, Mr. Laden to the news. Thank you, Miss Classic. Um, this is uh, Global Sunday News. It's May 30th, 2021, and I'm Kenneth Ludden, uh, bringing you the news today. Our first segment is about COVID. Normally, COVID is the second segment, but this time, there are other things going on in the world that, that we're going to address later. The COVID pandemic is, is advancing, um, and it is doing all kinds of different things at this moment. Um, it was just announced today that 50% of all adult Americans have now had their full vaccination. And at the same time in India, they have three and four people in a bed in, in, in their intensive care unit. Um, it's all over the map, all over the map, up and down, poor countries, rich countries. Look at this news uh, clip from Adaderna Studio 24 in Sri Lanka. And then we'll be back at the other end of the news. Thank you. Pandemic. 
According to the head of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, the EU is apparently on track to have enough doses delivered to vaccinate 70% of the adult populations by the end of July. Let's cross over to Albedar and World News Pressure correspondent Prashani Rodrigo from Helsinki in Finland. For more, Prashani. Yes, Shanali. The European Union expects to have received more than a billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines by the end of September from four drug makers. The document prepared by the European Commission shows the EU is confident of having enough vaccine to immunize its entire eligible population by that date, well beyond the initial goal of inoculating 70% of the adult population by the end of the summer. Ursula von der Leyen said the EU expects to get more than 400 million doses in the second quarter. By the end of the year, the EU forecasts it will receive another 452 million doses for a total of 1.5 billion. The former German Defense Minister said the infrastructure for a digital vaccination certificate intended to make traveling in the European Union easier would be ready at EU level from June 1st. The 27 national leaders also discussed how to reach the EU's new target to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% by 2030 from 1990 levels. Agreed last month, the goal is more ambition, ambitious than the previous plan for a 40% cut. The proposal will from part of a border package of climate policies the Commission will publish in July. Back to you, Shanali. Thank you. That was Adha Darina World News Special Correspondent Prashani Rodrigo reporting from Helsinki in Finland. French media and social networks were abuzz with speculation about a mysterious offer to influencers and YouTube personalities asking them to publicly degenerate the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine in return for money. It's a common marketing practice. Businesses tap into the power of social media influencers to try and promote their products in partnership deals. But when it involves a smear campaign against a particular product, it takes on a different meaning. Leo Grasset, who runs a popular YouTube channel, is among a number of social media influencers who recently got a mysterious email. It's strange, I've received a partnership proposal which consists of denigrating a Pfizer vaccine in a video. Grasset said he turned down the 2,000 euro deal, which instructed him to say, the death rate among the vaccinated by Pfizer is almost three times higher than among the vaccinated by AstraZeneca, and asked him not to reveal he was airing an ad or a sponsored video. The YouTuber said he tracked the marketing agency claiming to work for an anonymous client to a laser treatment center in London. It's a classic method used by fake news spreaders, according to one specialist. There are some signs that suggest people with links to Russia could be behind the mysterious campaign. An investigation has been launched. France's health minister, Olivier Véran, has called the move dangerous and irresponsible. Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine was found to be effective in adolescents aged 12 to 17 and showed no new major safety problems in trial, potentially setting the stage for a second vaccine for school-aged children to be authorized in July. Vaccine makers are racing to get approval for their COVID-19 shots in younger and younger people. And on Tuesday, Moderna announced it would be the second firm to seek clearance to use their vaccine in school-aged children in the U.S. A clinical trial showed Moderna's shot was effective in adolescents aged 12 to 17, with no new or major safety problems. The Moderna vaccine, already authorized for adults aged 18 and up, will now go to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, which could grant emergency use authorization as soon as July. It took U.S. regulators about a month to review and approve the Pfizer-BioNTech shot for ages 12 to 15. Moderna's trial studied 3,732 adolescents aged 12 to 17. Two-thirds got the vaccine, and one-third got a placebo. Two weeks after the second dose, researchers found no cases of COVID-19 in the vaccine group and four cases in the placebo group. Children rarely develop COVID-19 symptoms, but they remain at risk of falling seriously ill and can still transmit the virus. Widely vaccinating kids aged 12 and up 
could allow U.S. schools and summer camps to relax masking and social distancing measures suggested by the CDC. Moderna is currently testing its vaccine in children as young as six months of age. Whatever your situation, try to find a way to get vaccinated. Many places around the world have a zero waste policy so that they know how many shots are in a vial and how many vials will be in a day. You can sign up. And then at the end of that day, if they have extra shots, they will call you, you go in, you can get your shot ahead of your age group, get your vaccination. And now we're going to return to our guest this week, uh, Mr. William Bostick, and we're going to go to a video we've already talked about um, already on this show. It's called Mathematic. Here we go. I feed my fans, this is all about clean cash rules, everything and all the evil that surrounds me because I'm the king who broke the angel wings. So do the mathematics. So do the mathematics. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh. Welcome to New York, better known as the rotten apple. Come take this walk with me and get a taste of my reality. Paint the vividly, your vision of clarity, which has become a rarity. The rappers with popularity, now they say in the culture that I'm the siege by a pyramid. FEMA, I ain't hearing it, and damn sure ain't fearing it. Birth in the last millennium, writer of my own requiem, battled amongst the best of them. Delhi, with a pad and pen. I was one of Jesus' sins, but I was always taught to win. Verbal fly like the wind, combination heroin. I just found the gift and chaos, a beautiful combination with a mind so complex it's like i'm stuck in the matrix surrounded by bigger dreams and even bigger goals and i ain't gonna stop till a nigga got 30 million so i ain't getting pigeonholed i'm covering all angles distribution copyright publishing ain't no fucking me i'm a grown man i don't sit the peak i'm a gangster motherfucker i run these streets i always handle beef like it's a barbecue and if i can't get it through my shooters i train to shoot while i'm handling the booth and living a glamour life and taking care of business Every day like it's my last night My last will and right Nah, I'm bred to fight I really live this life That's why it's nothing to write Mathematics global sunday and that was mathematics so william i have a question the world just um suffered a major loss um the world of hip-hop and rap by the loss of o2 and um, earlier there was also the loss of dmx how does losing a rapper impact impact the rap industry It's always a huge impact and, you know, it's always huge when we lose someone, you know, um, 
even if you have a record that to me it's like this even if you have a record on the underground and, and you're not as you know popular as per se 50 cent or somebody of that stature, it's still a huge loss you were talent you, you contributed you had some sort of contribution to the culture hip-hop so it's a loss any little piece to this puzzle is a loss you know it's like uh, uh every every rap artist to me is like a vein in the body that allows this body of hip hop to function. If one vein goes, you know, then the body doesn't function correctly, you know? So we constantly lose a vein, the body gets weak and then we get the newer guys to come in and, you know, they rejuvenate the body again, you know? But it's always a huge loss. It's always, it, it always hurts when we lose someone, you know? Especially someone like O2 who was just, such a talent, such a, such a, just a genuine soul. He was just a good dude, just a good dude all around the board, you know? We, we know that you had worked with him directly. Um, take us there. Take us to that, that kind of zone where artists work together, you know, when, when you're just riding on that, that ocean of the talent. Um, I worked with them via internet. Um, we did a lot of video, you know, conferencing and a lot of video calls in the process of working on the project. Um, unfortunately, I never got to meet O2 physically. Um, we never got to sit in the same recording studio, but working with him and working with Saints PMF when I produced the three records for them, um, that was special for me to see, you know, these young guys, you know, who are a lot more younger than me, their drive, their passion, just, just their all out willingness to, you know, just, they wanted to make dope records. They just wanted to make dope music. And I, I admired that. I, I, I really, you know, sat back and was like, damn, I, I really got to work with these dudes. So I, I, I sat back, you know, I worked with them. Um, the process of working with them was even, even more amazing because, um, even though we did it via internet, it was, you know, the back and forth, the creative, you know, thought back and forth between me and them. Um, they would send me something and I'd, yo, maybe you should do this. And, you know, I would send them the idea back. They would go back into the studio and redo the idea the way I, you know, gave them this little, you know, advice and all that. So it was fun doing it like that, man. And then the end product was amazing. The end product was just stupendous for me. You know, um, it was my first time working with, you know, someone internationally that I had never even met physically. It was the first time I had done work over the just internet period, you know? Um, we used to work in, in the studio with an artist, you know? At least when I was coming up the way I came up, that's how we did it, you know? Um, now it was a lot more, you know, the whole internet friendly thing with sending emails back and forth and, you know, it, it's cool. Um, back when I, I did the project with Saints BMF, uh, Saints PMF, my bad, Saints PMF, um, it was kind of fresh and new to me, you know, the whole doing stuff back and forth on the internet. So it was real special for me, you know, especially dealing with genuine guys like they, you know, O2, Lindani, these guys, they just genuine dudes, man. Well, you, you, you mentioned the other guys and I, I was in touch with Lindani who updated me because I'm not within, you know, the culture. Of course, yeah. I listen to the records and, you know, I've been working with poets and um, that's what I consider you, you know, you're poets of the spoken yeah. word. And what you just mentioned, everything Lindani also proved that he was, you know, speaking uh, directly as a, as what you would say a brother, you know, open and say, let's connect, let's see. And I felt I felt so touched and it's so important, you know? Yeah. And, and, even after, and even after working on the project with them, you know, I, I stayed in touch with them, all of them. You know, we, we speak all the time. Me and Danny, I think we speak every day. You know what I mean? We text each other every day on WhatsApp. You know, those are, they became my brothers, you know? Um, we checked on each other all the time. You know, me and Danny check on each other all the time. So, um, yeah, man, it was real special working with them, you know, and just having the opportunity to work with O2 is even more special. So talented, man. It was just, it was yeah. just I heard the news, you know. Just so talented, man, you know. 
his improvisation, the way he rapped off of his head was incredible. Like, incredible. Yeah. You know, at home, I used to uh, see them uh, getting excited of uh, collaborating with this uh, overseas artist mm -hmm. and uh, the joy they will have when they, they, they had an artist that's collaborating with them yeah. when they appreciated from art, by artists from overseas more than here at home, which pains yeah, it's me. Same. It's same for me. Yeah, yeah you know, um, a lot of, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, about, you know, my fan base. I don't have mm -hmm. a, a, much of a fan base per se in the United States. I don't focus on U.S. sales or, you know, a U.S. fan base. People overseas mm -hmm. appreciate my music a lot more. They appreciate the genuine, you know, sense of hip hop that I'm bringing to the table. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it excited me to see that they were fans of my music, you know, um, Cause I was fans of them, you know. I, I listen to their stuff, and I'm getting excited. Like, wow, these dudes put something new out. Every time I seen, you know, they were putting something new out. I'm excited, and, and it just it tripped me out to see how they were so excited to hear my music or to just be yeah, so always. supportive of my stuff. You know, mm. um, same with my yeah. other across the globe. You know, um, I it, it you know. I talk to my fans, you know, when they reach out to me via Instagram, Facebook, I actually speak to my fans. I'll video chat with a fan and sit down and talk to them. Cause I appreciate the fact that they tune into what I'm doing. Um, I'm just trying to bring a message to the people globally that the way we grow up is not the way we end up. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. We grow up one way we're raised one way, but we, 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 as we become adults, we become intelligent enough to know, all right, look, we came from that. We ain't gotta continue mm -hmm. that. Now, how do we continue to elevate and go forward? This is what I'm trying to bring in my music as well. Like giving you the message of, okay, we did this. Now, how do we move forward from it? You know? Um, yes. And, and to me, I, I feel like people overseas get it a lot more, you know? people in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's, there are no limitations, uh, Apostik. It's uh, Your limitation is only your imagination. Yeah. So I, I take that so much. And uh, I'm glad that you, you made your life together with O2 as masterpiece, you know? As they yeah. say, they say, uh, if you imagine uh, uh, no limitations on what you can be, have or do, that's what we did together. So um, I just want to send a shout out to you uh, and, and a big respect for you reaching out to them in the location, one March, it's now now in, in Devon, for just uh, respecting and loving them unconditionally. Yeah, unconditionally. yeah I just send a shout out. Thank you. Those are my brothers. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to... I wanted to check uh, what, what makes a good song, uh, uh, Williams, uh, what makes a good song in your music? Because I can see the one that says mathematics. I know uh, music is a, is, is a universal uh, language. Yeah. And uh, math, yeah. math is one of the, math is one of the, uh, um, um, mu one of the music <laughs> language that we have, it, mm -hmm. despite the other language, uh, the other subjects that we have in school. Okay. So what 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 is it that makes uh, a good song to you, um, brother? To me, when I listen, and, and I know it's good music, is because it, it, it gives me a feeling. It gives me a feeling of realness. I can relate to it. Um, when people, you know, in their music, and not 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 to you know talk bad at anyone, um, when they talking about you know popping bottles of champagne and you know, spend a hundred million dollars on a home and all that. I'm not living that life. So that doesn't entice me. Um, when they're talking about people dying and people getting robbed and, and you know, the, the, you know, the stores getting burned down on the corners, um, being looted, I can relate to that because I'm going through that. I'm living that every day. Mm. Um, living every day where I still got to go outside my front door and still look over my shoulder not because of a problem or a beef, it's just because of the violence that goes on in the street. 
gun violence in my city since the pandemic has started um, has gone up almost 70%. Um, mm. We have maybe 20 shootings throughout the city a day. Now we got over 200 shootings, you know? Um, mm. It's, we're almost at equal numbers to Chicago and Chicago is the murder capital of the United States. Um, they defunded the police department, you know? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't support the police, you know? Um, as you know, rap, we never really support police. It's always FTP. <laughs> um, mm. They defunded, <laughs> so now you got young kids who are unguided, who have nothing to do. They have no mm. guidance, all the elders, you know, and, and I blame my peer group. Um, all the elders in my peer group didn't educate these young kids on what to do with their time. They taught them the wrong things. They go out there, sell drugs, shoot guns, and do everything in the negative. Mm. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to bring, you know, just trying to educate the, the, the kids and tell them, yo, look, man, we did this. This is what we do. But how do we mm. grow? How do we move forward? Um, and what mm. makes it strong is... To me, the reality, the lyricism, um, this is rap um, and hip hop, you know, yeah, there's, there's fun, playful rap. But for me, um, I look for more of the lyricism. Um, how well did you paint that picture for me? Um, how witty were the lines that you came up with, the punchlines, the metaphors? Um, how poetic can you get, you know? Um, mm -hmm. how? Outside of the box, can you think to make me go back to that record and say, all right, cool. This line here had two or three meanings. It was an entendre um, because that's how brilliant the writing was. Um, mm. You can have somebody sit here and say, sat back, cat, hat in a rap and go 10 times platinum. That's fine and well. That's cool. That doesn't entice me. When you have lyrics that are, are, are Eminem caliber, you know, where they really make you think. Nas, who's probably mm -hmm. the most intelligent rapper to ever, you know, rap. Um, his rhymes make you think. They make you go back and say, did he really say that? Did, mm -hmm. did that really mean this? Was this actually the breakdown for what he said? That to mm -hmm. me makes the record. Um, the happy-go-lucky, catchy choruses, that's cool. I don't knock y'all, you're making your money. Um, is that what I look for? Nah, that, that's not what I have in my playlist every day. I'm listening mm -hmm. to guys that are probably not on, you know, the average person's radar. Um, just throw out a few names. I'm, I'm, you know, in my playlist, there's guys like Lion Sing the Divine. Shout out to Lion Sing. Um, there's guys like um, Mugshot Baby, a.k.a. La Bell Um mm -hmm. I'm listening to, you know, to, to guys like Mateo Laws, you know, um, guys that, you know, that are not on, you know, the average person's radar, but these guys are painting such vivid lyrical pictures that I could appreciate the music, you know? Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not listening to the Little Waynes and the Drakes. And, you, know. you know, I, I have been uh, in education, classical fine art for over 50 years now. You're smart. Thank you you are smart. Boy, do I wish you were 10 years old or eight years old and in my academy, <laughs> you know, and um, hopefully Monday we'll be able to get you to come and talk to the kids in the academy who are young I love that. artists. I, love that. I would love that. But you talk about all those names, all those inspirations, and your name was that inspiration for O2 and his crew, yeah. you know, you have come up with something new. You have come up with something now and something future. Uh, you've described it as true, authentic, grimy, street New York rap music. <laughs> Tell us about that. What makes that stand out? I know what it makes stand out for me, but for you, what drives you? And what makes that the, the way you're going? Because you have added something new to this world. Um. I can't take full credit for, for you know, the sound. Um, the sound is just New York. Um, it's what, the sound is just, well, everything that embodies New York. Um, mm -hmm. What drives me to make that kind of music is the lifestyle I grew up living. Um, 
I was born on the Lower East Side, raised between, you know, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. Um, seen a lot of murders growing up as a kid, seeing my best friend when I was 15 get murdered, you know, over pride and just nonsense, you know. Um, grew up selling a lot of drugs, which, you know, um, not ashamed of, but am ashamed of. Because, you know, as you grow, you sit and say, damn, I shouldn't have done those things. Um, but, you know, you can't change the past. You can't rewrite the past. You just continue to move forward for your future. Um, and, like, what drives me to make that kind of music, like I say, it's just the life I grew up living. Um, the life that I continue to see, you know, some of my peers and some of the kids underneath me living. Um, it's reality rap. Um it's exactly what we go through every day, you know, in my city, in all the urban cities across the globe, in every country and every continent, you know, because um, gangs are just not here in New York, LA, Atlanta, Chicago. Um, gangs are everywhere. Gangs are in South Africa, gangs are in Germany, gangs are in France, in London, you know. Um, we grow up, we grew up seeing that, you know, every day. Um, we still grow up kids still growing up today seeing it um we go through it everything you know we go through the gunfire so when it came for me to make music um I wanted to reflect what was going on really around me you know um give the people that real vivid picture of what was going on you know um kind of like um excuse my language but we call that uh, um like I said part of my language but we call it the nigga news um um, it's basically, you know, the hood news. Um, what I'm saying in my raps, you know, I'm from New York, but people in LA can relate to it because they're going through the same thing. People in Atlanta can relate to it. They're going through the same thing. People in Chicago can relate to it. So we kind of just pass it along the news, you know, of what's going on in my neighborhood. And the same thing with guys like Kendrick Lamar, um, God rest Nipsey Hussle. Um, those guys from the West Coast, they were feeding us back the news that was going on in their hood. You know, rap to me, reality rap is the news. We are just, we're, we're like news anchors, you know. Um, we're giving you everything that goes on on a daily basis in our neighborhood, you know, from the violence to the, the, the drugs, the police corruption, you know, because let's get, you know, that's a whole different, you know, conversation we could have is, you know, the police corruption, which also leads us to think the way we think about the police, you know. Um, we don't trust the police, so that reflects in the music. Um, and sometimes people say, oh, it tends to seem a little violent and a little, you know, a uh, little, little uh, 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 angry towards the police department. Yeah, we have every right to be angry towards the police department. We've, you know, gone through so many, you know, trifling and things with them, you know, and we continue to go through things, you know, God rest George Floyd, you know, who we, we, we lost, you know, due to some craziness but all that reflects in the music you know what I mean um it's just the reality of what goes on in the world and we just I'm you know for, I'm gonna speak for me I bring it to the forefront everything I see I hear I go through in my personal life I bring through the for I bring to the forefront there's um there's no sugar coating in my in my music I'm bringing it to you real raw and uncut well if yeah your work has that in it i suggest that's what i know from my work working in film and video the moving image and and dance and choreography it takes a lot of work in it working your thoughts until it gets what we can hear to find that voice and find that materiality and to find that message and um, there's a lot of questions that will also be coming up. So if we go on to the news now, we can catch up on it. And okay. I'm looking forward to that. So let's move on to the news, Mr. Ladin. Thank you. Thank you, people. You know, you talk about gangs. Talk about gang leaders. There's a meeting coming up between Biden and Putin. We're talking about two gangs, the Israelis and the Palestine, now in a ceasefire. We've got the democracies of the world and the Taliban. 
And then we've got WhatsApp versus India. Everything is these gangs clashing. You know, you talk about being the modern day troubadours carrying the news. Well, here's here's world news now. Um, take a look at this clip again from Adaderna in Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, there, Studio Twenty Four, and we will um, after the end of the news, we will look at that news, and then we're going to listen to some more of your news here, Mr. Vasic. Thank you. Here we go. Watch this. Welcome back. High tensions are likely next month as U.S. President Joe Biden has announced that he will meet the Russian President Vladimir Putin for the first time. The White House and the Kremlin confirmed the June 16th summit between the two leaders despite contentions, rivalries and past acronymy. Joe Biden, for the first time in his presidency, will meet face to face with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Geneva next month. The Kremlin and the White House on Tuesday both confirmed the summit's date, June 16th, and the sit-down comes amid sharp disputes over election interference, cyber attacks, human rights, and Ukraine. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. This is how diplomacy works. We don't meet with people only when we agree. It's actually important to meet with leaders when we have a range of disagreements, as we do with Russian leaders. The icy relations between the two leaders were on full display in March when Biden told he thought Putin was, quote, a killer. Does mm -hmm. President Biden regret calling Vladimir Putin a killer? No, the president gave a direct answer to a direct question. The Russian had a ready retort. And you know, I remember in my childhood, when we argued in the courtyard, we used to say, it takes one to know one. Diplomats have since sought ways for the two rivals to work together. Last week, Secretary of State Antony Blinken met Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in Iceland. It's our view that uh, if the leaders of uh, Russia and uh, the United States uh, can work together uh, cooperatively, uh, our people, uh, the world, uh, can be a safer and more secure place, and, and that's what we see. But, Sergey, welcome. It's good to see you. It won't be Biden's first handshake with Putin. The two met in 2011, when Biden was vice president and Putin then prime minister. And looking back at the last decade, the sentiment hasn't much changed. It's in our self-interest, and I hope in the self-interest of Russia, to have our relationships closer. The Kremlin said in a statement that the two leaders would discuss bilateral ties, problems related to strategic nuclear stability, and cooperation in the fight against COVID-19. Washington's top diplomat held talks with Israeli's prime minister during the first leg of his four-day trip to the Middle East following the ceasefire between Israel and Gaza. And there, Antony Blinken highlighted the need for a two-state solution. Uh, I informed uh, President Abbas uh, and earlier uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu that uh, the United States will notify Congress of our intention to provide uh, $75 million in additional development and economic assistance uh, for the Palestinians in uh, 2021. Speaking alongside Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas in the West Bank city of Ramallah on Tuesday, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken pledged that Washington would provide new aid to help rebuild Gaza as part of efforts to bolster a ceasefire between Hamas and Israel. I say this as a, uh, as a father. Uh, no child, whether Israeli, Palestinian, uh, or American, uh, is a st statistic. Um, we know the human consequences uh, when uh, violence uh, takes the upper hand, uh, and we are uh, determined uh, that that not be the, the case. Blinken reiterated that Washington intended to ensure that Hamas, which it regards as a terrorist organization, did not benefit from the humanitarian aid, a potentially difficult task. Blinken began his visit to the region in Jerusalem, where he held talks with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who warned Hamas against any resumption of hostilities. If Hamas breaks the calm and attacks Israel, our response will be very powerful. And we have uh, discussed ways of how to work together to prevent Hamas uh, rearmament uh, with the weapons uh, and means of uh, aggression. 
hoping to reverse a move taken by former President Donald Trump that angered Palestinians. Blinken said the United States would advance the process of reopening its Jerusalem consulate that had served as its diplomatic channel to the Palestinians. Blinken's visit to the region comes after a Cairo-brokered ceasefire between Israel and Hamas last Friday after days of deadly violence that recalled their last major conflict in 2014. Hundreds of Israeli airstrikes killed at least 254 people in Gaza and injured over 1,900, Palestinian medics said. The Israeli military put Israel's death toll at 13. During his tour, Blinken will next head to Cairo and Jordan. Australia abruptly announced it will shutter its embassy in Afghanistan this week, expressing fears over the increasingly uncertain security environment in Kabul as foreign troops withdraw. The Taliban, who have ramped up violence across the country in recent weeks, reacted by saying they would provide a safe environment to di diplomats and humanitarian organizations. As the final withdrawal date for U.S. troops in Afghanistan edges closer, an uptake in violence across the country has driven the Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison to take action. In a statement, the head of state announced that the Australian embassy in Afghanistan would close on Friday. The departure of the international forces and hence Australian forces from Afghanistan over the next few months brings with it an increasingly uncertain security environment where the government has been advised that security arrangements could not be provided to support our ongoing diplomatic presence. The sudden closure is said to be an interim measure. In response to the announcement, both Afghanistan's foreign ministry and the Taliban have pledged to keep diplomats and humanitarian organizations safe. But recent clashes between Afghan forces and Taliban fighters has done little to reassure officials. The U.S. military is now in the final stages of its withdrawal ahead of the September 11th deadline. Hundreds of Afghans are believed to have been killed since U.S. forces began their departure. The violence has raised fears that a security vacuum in the country could lead to a Taliban comeback. But U.S. authorities say they will stay committed to the region. Just because we are removing our troops and, our, and uh, ending our military mission in Afghanistan doesn't mean that we're... Um, uh, walking away from the uh, region. Walking away uh, from the be region. From the uh, nothing could be further from the truth. There is abundance of news about coronavirus. For the complete video of our second segment, please tune in to our YouTube page or to diver Diverse Television um, on the internet. And now we're going to bring you more of the music of Mr. William Bostick. And now we're going to watch Shotgun from Hell. You are watching Global Sundays. I can still hit it from long range. Aim on point, fuck a shooting like Danny Ainge. Crossover mean though, the same way I whip the coat. Risk game ridiculous. The fiends always back for more, and I'm never taking shorts. That's not how I was taught. It's about that double up for the price that coat was bought. Remember, watch the Lord, they out here harassing us. Lord, they knocking down every door from the first to the fourth. Coat down the commode, kick over the battery. Let the acid wash the work. It's no longer a felony. Tell the pigs to eat a dick. I'm putting you on to some shit. I hope you got a pen and a pad and you taking notes and shit This is game that I'm giving out On how to survive during hard times and win during the drought Fuck the fame and the cloud focus on stacking your paper This is just a little reminder from your friendly neighbor Memory Gondola hit the cerebellum. A slight pick me up to transfer my general knowledge. These bitches code text clogging up the game, and I'll be busting through that neocortex. We is not the same. And Lucy Morpheus crossed over my dreams. In all reality, my apathy is busting at the seams. These bitches index forgotten. Camp below. These haters staying up late to watch my every episode. From the Haley shit. Have it ass sedated, and I'm coming for every little thing I've ever indicated. Vindicated. I'm feeling some type of way. Pupils always. Once a kid with hoop dreams, brick by brick, I discovered my creed. And your hunger will show your true colors off to me. Hex only square. 
stress that come to kill, steal, and destroy. I don't fuck with toys, cause I ain't shopping Zion, my boy. Welcome everybody. Uh, this is the one and only Queen of Global Sundays. I hope everyone is doing great. Especially, I uh, want to send a shout out to Zulu Pavarot, um, Duma Pumulo Matola uh, in South Africa in Devon. Duma Matola, the Zulu Pavarot, our lovely tenor in South Africa. I heard that he released the second album, which is very hot. And I'm sure we're going to enjoy it. And mm -hmm. I want to welcome back all the hosts and the producer, big up there, guys, and also our handsome uh, special guest, Mr. William Bostick, in the house. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> so today's motivation uh, was going to just uh, inspire you. I will just run uh, just a few words for you. As in South Africa, we're celebrating the last day of the Africa month. I want to tell you, especially the women in South Africa that are feeling a little bit less self-esteem. I want to tell you, Africa women, uh, you are black women, beautiful, magic, intelligent, resilient, and I love you. Uh, be innovative and uh, know that you are powerful influential and be unapologetic to everyone you know and i want to say the last lines that there are no limits to what you can accomplish except the limit uh, your, your your place on what your own thinking so stop limiting yourself when you are thinking the limitations uh, are just uh, only the imaginations. So just think wise and think wild, like how O2 did with uh, Mr. William Postick uh, in New York and the other artists that allowed him to be inspired and they inspired each other as we are now a global family. So be inspired and make your life a masterpiece. Boo, 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 boo. Never give up. Back to the studio. Thank you, Miss Classic. Well, um, I want to pass on to William Bostick, who already said something earlier about where we come from and where we're going, because we are what we are thinking, basically. Could you um, give a comment on that? William. On, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, then, um, what Miss Classic referred to that it's about the thinking and the self thinking about ourselves and how that can change us and where that can get us. Yeah. Um, just got to think of yourself in a more positive light, you know. Um, just gotta try to wake up every day and think to yourself, you know, um, yesterday may not have been that great, but today's gonna be better. Cause tomorrow we gotta make it even, you know, more special. Um, mm. Every day you just gotta wake up and believe in yourself, you know. Um, some days, you know, even myself, some days I struggle. You know, I wake up and I don't wanna do this no more. You know, you, you there's so many things going on around us in the world that you just wake up some days disgusted, but. You gotta, you know, push through that, fight through that. 
um, what helps me push through that, fight through that, one is my kids, my wife, my family, um, and some of the young guys around me. Um, they push me and motivate me. They, they, you know, give me a reason to laugh and smile sometimes because I see my young self in them and I can teach them and tell them which way not to go and things, you know, not to do, you know? So that's kind of a motivation for me too, to wake up every day and just thank God that I'm here because I get to, you know, guide another young soul, another young individual the right way, you know? Because I didn't have much guidance. And all the guidance I did have as a kid, majority of it was negative. So, Yes, you, uh, you have taken us on this journey through your music, through your art. Um, what's exactly at the heart of that? And how do you, what drives you to go to that place? Did, did you bring reality to people who are just addicted to avoiding reality? real life, my reality, um, my reality itself, you know, um, my life is, uh, you know, coming up as a kid, um, the 14 years in prison, you know, uh, from mistakes that I made as a kid, bad decisions I made, you know, um, so that's what drives me, you know, to go back to, you know, wanting to teach these kids and not, you know, have them running around in the streets doing all these negative things, is because of my experiences myself, you know, what I went through. 14 years in prison alone made me say, yo, you know what? Something got to change, you know? And something got to change within the youth. And in order for it to change within the youth, it got to change within the elders, you know? If there's nobody of the elder, you know, generation teaching the younger kids what to do and what not to do, they're just going to go, they're going to go to what is the first thing which is easy for them to do, which is the negative. Negative, negative is always easier than positive. We all, we all know, you know, it's easier to go the negative route and to do all the negative things than it is to go the positive route, you know? So, for me, that, that that's, that's what drives me every day. That's what drives me in my music, you know, um, to give the people the real so they know what, you know, what, what the realities are, what they face with and what can actually be the outcome, you know? Um, I tell people all the time, you know, 14 winners, 13 summers took a lot from me, you know. Um, I don't want to see nobody else go through that. So whatever I could do to try to teach somebody, whether it's through my rhymes, whether it's through just my everyday living, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to, you know, get a young kid to not go down the same path. You know, I went down. I have to be able to see the same realities I've seen, you know. I don't want my kids seeing those realities. My sons, I got two young boys. You know, my oldest son is eight. My youngest son is five. You know, I don't want to mm -hmm. grow up the way I grew up. So, you know, the realities of my music is that uh, it's a reflection of how I came up. And it's, you know, education. To me, it's like a, a manual, a rule book for these kids on what to do and what not to do, you know. Um, because I do tell them the harsh realities of what the outcome is going to be. You know, um, you commit these crimes and you do this, the, these, these, these are the things in the street, and these are the things that are going to come out. These are the negative things that are going to come out, you know? So, William, there's, I wish I could have a, a question coming up. However, you answered it, and I listened to you carefully, and I realized how much you are talking from your experience. It's rather than having a concept you were teaching from having gone through it and there's a very strong message in there to our viewers or listeners could you tell how you and you see i i, I need to take a moment to rephrase because of course there's a lot of preparations in these shows and then like in creativity when it finds a way, it's like a river, and the river takes its way when it's not put into a restraint. So I want to choose them carefully because it's such a pleasure that we can share some time together. Um, how would you tell to our listeners, how could you pass on to the next generation 
that knowledge? Is there a way that you discovered a way to do it, what to tell them or how to do it? Realness. Realness supersedes everything. You know, um, I tell my kids this, you know, I tell my, 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 you know, the young kids around me, the young, you know, young, you know, some of the young gang members around me. Um, I tell them all the time, realness, man, just to be real with them, you know, um, don't sugarcoat them. You know, I, I was given a lot of stuff sugarcoated when I was a kid. And then when I found out the harsh reality of it, the, the real of it, the realness of it, um, I was shocked, you know, um, just be real out, out from day one, out the gate, just realness, you know, um, I don't know how to be anything else, but real. So real is the word. That's the way I can describe it in one word. Be real, never be fraudulent. You know, um, it's cool. So people have imaginations. They got, you know, these these uh, amazing imaginations and I don't take it away from them, you know, cool. Write a comic book if that's what you want to do. You know, for me in rap music is if you got that much of an imagination, you should be writing a comic book. You should be writing rap. Um, this is reality music, you know, reality. It's real, you know. That's, so that's the best word I could choose is real, you know. Mm -hmm. mm, it's not really me. I have question number Thank you very much. You know, being real is what it's all about. You know, um, that's in, in my art form as well. Um, you know, when you're talking about passing on to um, the youth, and that's going to bring us to the uh, nonprofit organization that we are featuring today. We've seen a little bit of this in the past. It's a Francois Xavier Bagno Center for Health and Human Rights, but they have programs all over the world. And um, I want you to look at this video and then afterwards, I'm going to tell you a little bit of what they are doing to pass on that real message to the youth around the world. Uh, watch this video. It's a very short- That's what Xavier Bagneau loved rescuing people. In adulthood, he rescued people as a helicopter pilot in the Alps. In 1986, he died in a tragic accident. His mother, Albina Dubra-Rouvray, wanted to continue her son's passion. She did so in two ways. The first was to support those things that Francois cared most about, the Alpine valleys in which he flew his missions, space, air flight, his university. These are supported by the FXB Foundation. The second was to create an NGO, FXB International, which would help rescue the poorest people on the planet, those suffering from the most extreme poverty, such as children orphaned as a result of AIDS. This is achieved through the FXB Village Programme, a pioneering approach to eradicating poverty. This programme was radical. It went against the fashion of the time. It was not just one solution, but several, working as one. FXB invested in the basic needs of human life, health, housing, education and nutrition. It then added the fifth element, business. A business that, within three years, makes it possible for each FXB village to pay for itself and become self-sufficient, so breaking the cycle of poverty. To raise funds for these two strands of activity, Albina sold three quarters of what she owned. She put everything into the foundation and the NGO, including the FXB village programme. That was 25 years ago. The work continues, it inspires, and it works.
with all of our videos, they can be found in their complete form on our um, global uh, diverse television website and also on our YouTube channel. The thing that uh, FF, FXB is doing is what all of us are doing. It is reaching out to the youth, empowering the youth, giving them positive messages. Um, we're going to go now to a video, another video by William Bostic, um, Scribes from Legba. This is truly an amazing and impactful video. Go on this journey with him, this real journey. You are watching Global Sundays. Yes, sir, Baba Legba. Pain, but I ain't the type to brag about it. I dig deep and jot lines and let you blog about it. My lines are quotables, worthy of being testaments, biblical scriptures written by God, painting vivid pictures. Sun again, my yacht, reflection in Eligua with the power of Chango. So all praise to my Santos. It's them spiritual forces helping me move these mountains. Disciples and prophets leading me right to the fountain. You hear that chant, now the ground gon' shake. That's the power of a real nigga possessed by a saint A bite from the strange fruit Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding So it's mandatory that I'm always strapped with a weapon Right in my midsection, extra clip for protection Train since an adolescent, a prep for the unexpected uh, And keep a watch with your third eye It be your left hand that eventually turn right Then it's good now So you know they trail You see me, I'm unorthodox I'm right from off the block I'm right from where them killers bop And scream fuck the cops We still some niggas with some attitudes Just wise and more intelligent Not focus on that petty shit We trying to quadruple the flip Bag of snare samples and kicks With a sprinkle of that raw shit Marvelous, while puffing my eyeball is over this beat that's ominous With lyrics so insightful they could be studied in colleges Where the world to demolish it, abolish all the garbageness They look past the Puerto Rican and acknowledge the God of him It's a part of my arrogance, part of the work, part of the talk I move like an official nigga that embodies all New York I'm in my own lane, doing my own thing Still slinging that cocaine through wordplay that's propane Willie my damn name Okay. Most every I get it. You wake up in the morning, I'm the first nigga. Okay, thank you very much. And now um, I have a question for you, William. Yeah, um, that is an amazing, amazing uh, video. And I, I would like to talk to you about that for about four or five hours. But my question um, is every art form of the generation has a generation before and the generation that comes after, after them. Um, are you involved in passing on the knowledge and how do you remember having received such knowledge? Um, was there someone that taught you the things and how did they teach it to you that inspires you to teach it to the next generation? Um, I definitely do pass on all my knowledge to the younger kids, to the younger guys and, you know, the younger girls that I'm around um, or that I come across. Um, not much knowledge was given to me as a kid when it came to this music industry or when it came to um, the business and music period. Um, I had to kind of learn going through it, you know, um, 
the elders around me who were involved in music didn't really have for say the knowledge or the education they were kind of getting screwed over themselves so they were learning trial and error you know by trial and error going through it and then telling us later on after they don't went through it y'all don't do that um but by then we had already known not to do it um so a lot of it you know was just just going through it myself um and then having one individual um tell me I had an old jazz musician tell me one day, you need to learn about owning your masters. And I didn't know nothing about that. I just wanted to make music for music out. I didn't care nothing about owning no masters. I ain't know nothing about copyrights, nothing. I just knew how to write music, record it, and whatever. If the neighborhood listened to it, I was good and fine with that. Um, and then he educated me on owning my masters and told me to study Ray Charles. And I studied Ray Charles's career study guys like Ray Charles, study guys like, um, you know, Duke Ellington on how they didn't own their masters for years. They received peanuts and pennies for their work, you know, for years until they stepped up and gained the knowledge to step up and tell, you know, the individuals, the big recording companies, hey, look, you're not going, you're not going to own me no more. Um, so it, it later on in life, you know, um, I was kind of like self-taught, you know, um, but yeah, I do pass on the knowledge. Um, I feel like it shouldn't be, you know, some people say, ah, oh, you got to hold on to the knowledge. The knowledge should be, you know, sold to people. No, the game is to be told, not to be sold. Um, the knowledge I, I, I have, why I hold it? You know, let the young kids, you know, get that and be able to grow and take this culture even further than what we've taken it. You know, if we hold on to the knowledge, that restricts them from taking the culture even further, you know, and being able to tell the, the big record executives, well, no, nah, you're not going to give me 100000 but but you're kindly going to give me $100 million, you know, because they know their value and they know their worth. Um, so, yeah, no, nah, I don't I don't hold out on any knowledge. I Whatever I learn, I, I'm more than happy to give it away to the kids, you know. Wow. This is nice. Uh, and then, uh, Mr. Williams, um, in this uh, generation, uh, which pattern do you wish the young stars can cut from you? Uh, or more or less, if you can just give me two words, how would you wish them to remember you when you're gone? Because we are not here permanent. We are born and there is dead as well, as you saw with the old two. So how would you wish to be remembered by these young stars as you are a role model to them? Um, I guess that I always, I guess that I always um, just, you know, gave them the real, you know, um, gave them all the knowledge I have. Um, was always the same person, you know, never changed up. They're the same person. Now, same person. You know, um, I don't. I'm not your friend one day, and I'm not your friend, you know, the next day. If I'm your friend, I'm your friend until you prove me otherwise. You know, um, so that's how I want people to remember me, for just being the real person. You know, um, me every day. You know, um, I can't be nobody else. So that's how I want people to just be real. Mm -hmm. People. So we spoke about passing on the knowledge and that when you pass it on, well, there's kids and there's boys and then there's girls. And at the moment, there's something called Me Too. And at the moment in Germany, there's um, anti-discrimination contracts that they want to establish in theaters and some theaters agree, mm. others don't. And some theaters go through huge political affairs because the director is abusing some of the actors in way in which way the this these movements anti-racism anti-discrimination need to impact the rap industry um, you gotta just be careful even before the me too movement 
gotta be careful. You don't know what people's intentions are. You don't know if, you know, me, you know, coming up as a young artist, I didn't know if, you know, anyone's intentions were pure or if they wanted to use me, you know, um, they wanted to try to abuse me. I didn't, you know, nobody knows these things. Um, so yeah, it plays a part, you know, when it starts to happen and, you know, um, to me, it's just, it's, 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 it's like, for me, for, I, I gotta speak for me. Um, yes, yeah, it, it, it hurts rap with the whole Me Too movement, you know? Um, but there has to be some sort of truth behind it, you know? Um, in order for people to continue with the Me Too movement and for it to be a valid point, you know? Um, there's been instances where it's me too, me too, me too, and then they come to find out that nothing. But it, you know, it's dangerous, man. It's, it's dangerous nowadays. You know, it's dangerous. So you got to be real careful on who you deal with, who you're around. You know, um, I'm never around a young person unless there's two or three other people in the same room. You know. Because you don't, you just don't want to be accused of something that you're going to damn well do. You know what I mean? So, and me, myself, I, I don't deal with young kids in that sense. You know, um, yeah, I just, I, I don't record kids. I don't think I record anyone that's under like 18 or 19 years old, you know? Um, and that's kind of by choice. I don't, you know, also, we're in a, we're in a, a, a world now where, especially for me in my recording studio, you know, um, was very 420 friendly. I don't know if you guys know what 420 is. <laughs> 420 friendly and kids, young kids don't need to be around that, you know, um, even though they legalized it here in New York, it's legal in California, it's legal in Colorado. I still don't think kids should be around it. So kids don't need to be around me um, in that sense. Um, so I kind of don't put myself in a position to ever be caught up in that Me Too movement, um, because uh, I, I I know who I keep around me. Know who you keep around you. That's another thing. Know who you keep around you. Um, know that you can't trust everybody. So it ain't just a whole bunch of new people that's going to be around me. You know, um, mm -hmm. someone new. Let's believe you were brought by someone who I know for years and can vouch that you're not. You know, going to try something crazy later. You know, so yeah. But it, it plays a huge part, man, and it can hurt. It hurts rap so much. It hurts all forms of entertainment so much, you know. Um, but there's also another side to that too. Um, when you have the Me Too movement and you come to find out that the person who was doing the abusing was actually doing the abusing, then it's like, wow, okay, you know. So there's two sides to it. There's always two sides to everything. Wow. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Williams, uh, for just rising above the stereotype, uh, which is generalizing the South African artist and be able to work with our Saints PMF. And you you never been biased to judge them that because they are South Africans. And uh, you, you, you also didn't discriminate them and gave them an unfair treatment, you know, you were like a brother to them. So I want to send a shout out to you, my brother. And uh, the next question is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to uh, check now, uh, uh, according to the pandemic that we are, we, we are, we were going through, uh, which can be the lead of what's a depressing artist right now. How has a COVID-19 pandemic uh, impacted uh, in the industry of the hip hop? It was a huge impact. Um, recorded artists couldn't do shows anymore. If you know anything about music, um, we don't eat, we don't make too much money off of the actual streams. You know, mm -hmm. the artists really don't. So, um, a lot of artists depend on doing live shows, live you know performances, and there was no live shows, live performances. You know, everything. Was so you had to come up with. Uh, you know, um, make money. You know, a lot of people, you know, pay their mortgages. A lot of art, rap artists pay their mortgages. They pay all their bills off their music. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of performances, you had to find another way. You had to find another niche. 
um, for me, it was consistently putting music out. It was constant, you know, um, it was locked in the studio. Um, so it was like, why not just put music out and put music videos out, get the people to continuously buy into my music so I could have some sort of funding coming in, you know, um, and to maintain my career. Um, I know some artists that didn't last through the pandemic. Um, they went broke, filed for bankruptcy, um, chapter 11, so on and so forth, you know, uh, filed for all kinds of pandemic relief because the pandemic hurt. They couldn't go out there and do shows anymore. Um, for me, it, it also helped me um, get more in tune with my audience and my fan base. It allowed me to, you know, sit back and talk with my fans a lot more to get an insight of what they would want to hear from me. So I know maybe what to deliver for them on the next project, you know, to please my mm -hmm. family. Um, so yeah, you know, it, it, it hurt because it stopped a lot of money, especially for me, I'm a recording engineer as well. I'm not just a recording artist. So it was hard. I couldn't get people to come in and record anymore because you know, the pandemic, they shut the building down for three months. The building mm -hmm. was down. We couldn't even have anybody come in the building to record. So, you know, mm -hmm. yeah down a lot of things slowed down um luckily you know uh at the time you know that the pandemic you know i first started um i'm in the central mechanic as well as being a recording artist so time in the pandemic i was able to maintain because you know i had a regular job but for some recording artists you know it was mm. bad as well yeah you know people got evicted from their homes you know, so yeah, it hurt the, the whole thing really. Mm. Um, we have a we have a fun question for you a little bit. All right. Imagine you have a magic wand and you can give three wishes that'll be fulfilled immediately. Okay? Now here are the three. The first wish is one for yourself. Uh -huh. The second one is one for a person or an entity that you oppose from the bottom of your heart. And then the third is for mankind. Here's the magic wand in your hand, sir. <laughs> so you say the first one is for me. Yeah. This is for me. Um, I wish that the world would just go back to normal and everything will open up 100%. I need to get back to DJing again and everything. Uh, Amen. <laughs> Um, a, a wish for someone that I oppose, one of my oppositions, um, a person or a thing you oppose, uh, I, <laughs> person, I hope you wake up every day and look in the mirror and say, damn, Willie did it again. <laughs> and the third one was for mankind, for mankind, um, I wish mankind could find true and inner peace. Um, mm -hmm. And I wish mankind could realize that um, there is no such thing as race. We all human beings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what skin color you are. You're a human being. There is no race. Powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. If well, I was just thinking about that sentence, if there's a God, <laughs> but that is not the question. We're going to not bring this up. And so what would you tell who to people who are interested in a career in hip hop or rap? Kids. Don't do it. Go to school and become a rocket scientist, um, become a lawyer. As much as my fans and my people are gonna hate me for saying this, hey, become a cop. It pays more than what rap does. Um, this is a struggle. It's not for everybody. Um, this is what you truly wanna do, shoot for the stars. Um, mm -hmm. But my advice to most young people, man, go seek an education first. Have something else to fall back on. Rap ain't guaranteed. This is like sports. It ain't guaranteed. You know, have an education. Have something to fall back on. Whether, you know, you become a doctor, like I said, a lawyer, a school teacher, you know, uh, 
a meter maid attendant, you know, giving out parking tickets, do something, have something to fall back on. Um, mm. Rap ain't always gonna do it, man. This ain't a guarantee. It ain't. It ain't like you come into rap and it's like, all right, well, I know I'm gonna make a million dollars. Mm. We, don't, we don't know that, you know. At least with a career, you know what you you gonna make and you know what, you know the blanket that you are gonna have and this cushion that you <clears throat> setting up for yourself. Rap don't have much of a cushion. Remember, rappers don't have medical insurance. We ain't got no dental plans, mm -hmm. nothing. So, you know, until they start giving us, you know, 401ks and all that and, and medical plans and everything, I'll tell you to go get an education and go get another job, another career. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. we, have, we always like to have it on air, how people can reach you. You said that you actually do um, FaceTime with your, your fans. Mm -hmm. I, that is commendable. Um, I didn't exactly follow that program myself when I was younger and, and more well known. I maybe wish I had. But what, how how can people reach you? What is the way that they can get in touch with you? You know, Instagram at um, I T Z Willie B. It's I T Z W I L L Y B. Um, they can reach me at Twitter. Um, it's Willie Bostic, um, and they can reach me on Facebook, William Bostic. You know. Uh, I answer my fans. I genuinely answer my fans. People reach out to me every day and I answer them. You know, I get into trouble sometimes behind it, but you know, I still answer my fans. Mm -hmm. What gets into trouble? Scammers and 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 and, um, and yeah, sometimes the scammers, you know, and the, and the, and the craziness. But also, uh, gets me into trouble is uh so, some of the the, the 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 back and forth wars that go on between artists mm, and in the industry in, in the middle mm. of their, 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 their little situations and you know but yeah mm -hmm. I do. okay all right uh my brother um thank you so much Thank you so much for um, availing yourself and, you know, um, spending this amount of time. I know, I know, um, even though you are giving, you know, people an advice that they shouldn't try rap, um, but I know you have been in the industry for too long to know how to maneuver, how to work, how to make it work for you and stuff like that. Um, that's very powerful. I just want to uh, personally say thank you so much for making time. Um, to be part of the show. We welcome you to the Global Sunday show. Um, each and every time you hear these weird, weird, weird sentences like, aka chocolate kid, you must know what's in it. This is your boy, Lungani Kuala, and appreciating you, bro, for the information that you shared. It is so wonderful. Thanks to the whole team. I'm so sorry just to step in as always. <laughs> um, I'm just going to try and, and, and cut myself off because I know I'm being, I'm being called, uh, uh, you know, a speaker because I talk too much. Um, I, I know that uh, people is going to close the show right now, and I just wanted to say thank you so much, my brother. And then, yes, over to you, uh, Mr. People. Thank you, Longani. Well, I'm I have the honor to end the show actually and to go for a last round, like <laughs> Any last words, um, Mr. Laden. Well. I just want to say, um, you know, my life today got better meeting you, William. Um, it really did. You are a very, very impressive young man. And um, I welcome you to stay in touch. And uh, I would love to see if we can organize to get you to come to the academy and talk to our kids. They're going into ballet and opera and stuff like that, but it's the same thing. And I think that your message is brilliant. And also a shout out to your boys, your little boys. Tell them that, that they're very, very important. They are the future. They are. Thank you. I appreciate you. And yes, definitely, Mr. Ludden. Reach out to me and we'll set it up. We'll be we absolutely will. Miss Classic. My last words. Yeah, I want to uh, send a shout out to William Bostick. And I want to thank the Global Sundays and uh, the families uh, for sacrificing their love, their time. 
to make sure that you all of you guys you are smiling and you are sharing all these good things with us and um, all the best um, uh, Williams uh, to your uh, uh, upcoming shows and projects that you are planning and don't forget that you have a family that you started uh, in Devon in South Africa my family uh, yeah so don't forget that you adopted us as your family and uh, all the best in life and i want to uh share the words that i picked up one word about you uh you said they must the youth that you are heading that you are leading they must be real so i want to encourage them to normalize uh, speaking the truth if they want to get uh, to be real, they must speak the truth. And the families that don't understand our industry uh, that are having us, that will lead us to suicidal cases, they must keep quiet, then speaking nonsense. <laughs> I'm begging them. Keep quiet, then speaking nonsense. Because when you speak nonsense, we are emotional. There are no stage for us to, to, to talk out our burdens. So we're gonna end up killing ourselves if we don't have someone to talk to. So just keep quiet then speaking nonsense and be fearless. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Wait, I have I, I have something to say. Um, um, Boston, I'll be coming to um, New York. I'm looking forward to visit you in New York. Uh, yes, I wanted to say that. I'm so sorry, people. Please, uh, over to you. Over to you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I go. I have a passport. I'm coming too. I go. <laughs> well, I have that passport too. It's called being an artist. <laughs> Let me write one for you. <laughs> so, um, every everyone um check out bandcamp and you can find there. i i was able to listen to the music it's a platform where you can support the artists directly it's a really good thing and i had the chance to dive into your music um william there so um bandcamp uh, b a n d c a m p bandcamp is a a thing how you can connect directly and um i thank you all for watching this is the global sunday show i see you next week bye bye goodbye <laughs>